The other day, I surveyed college students and I asked them about their sleep habits. On average, they got around six hours of sleep at most each night, and roughly 90% of them reported that they wish they had more time in the day to do the things that they need or want to do. And so it got me thinking. I wanted to explore the possibility of college students being able to have more time for their work and other activities. And there is a possibility. If you can manage multiple sleep periods throughout the day rather than one core sleep at night, you can have more time in the day. This idea is called polyphasic sleep and is what I decided to experiment on for my sleep term project. Ever since I was a kid, I have lived off of a biphasic sleep schedule, which means most of my sleep would be at night, accompanied by a short nap in the afternoon. But polyphasic sleep goes beyond just two sleep stages in a day. It can range anywhere from three to around eight sleep segments, with the most common cycles being four to six. It's rumored that famous historical figures like Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, Leonardo da Vinci, they all had polyphasic sleep schedules, but that's besides the point. What I want to look at is the science behind polyphasic sleep, because polyphasic sleep really is just a sort of purposeful sleep deprivation. The way that these sleep schedules allow for more time in the day is by limiting the amount of time spent asleep. In class, we talked about how sleep deprivation makes life much worse and people much worse at life, from worse immune function and susceptibility to diseases, to impaired cognitive function and memory. There are a lot of topics to cover when it comes to sleep deprivation. But for this experiment, I chose to solely look at cognitive function. There have been many studies that mention impaired cognitive abilities of sleep-deprived participants, but a key difference in my experiment will be that sleep deprivation will be the result of polyphasic sleep rather than the manipulation of bedtime or wake time. For my experiment, the way I will test cognitive ability will be through three tests administered right after getting out of bed. This includes five trials of a reaction time test, three trials of a typing test, and the completion of two logic puzzles. I see reaction time as a representation of alertness and, well, reactivity. The typing test can represent one's ability to perform semi-automatic tasks with a little bit of thinking and motor function. And lastly, the logic puzzles are a way to look at problem solving and more complex thought processes. Also, I included it because I enjoy logic puzzles. To not put other people's health at risk, I decided I would only experiment on myself. As a comparison, for five days straight, I will spend nine hours in bed, intending for eight hours of sleep at night, and for another five days, I will have three segments of two hours in bed a day for a total time in bed of six hours intending for four and a half hours of total sleep time. Normally in polyphasic sleep schedules, you see the sleep times are generally evened out throughout the day, but the three segments for my schedule will still allow me to go to my classes. For my experiment, I am also choosing not to take additional naps throughout the day or consume caffeine or alcohol so that I can keep a strict schedule and not alter my sleepiness throughout the day. And in case anything goes wrong, I have added a break day between the first five days and the second set of five days, just in case anything goes wrong or something comes up. And I have also dedicated the entire day after the polyphasic five day set to solely sleeping, just so I could get as much recovery sleep as I possibly can and still somewhat look after my health. After waking up each day, I will fill out a quality re report on subjective content like sleep quality, alertness, stress levels, and time management. I will also keep track of sleep onset, awakenings, and time spent dreaming. I do not own a watch of any sort that can track my sleep, but I've been tracking my sleep for over two years now, so I would say my best judgment on these is pretty accurate. Even if it really isn't, this is just what we have to go with. To be completely transparent, I lost all of the footage I got during the experiment days, so the following footage in this segment of the video will all be reenactments of my sleep. Just wanted to let you guys know. So the first day of the typical monophasic sleep schedule, I got in bed at 11 p.m. and I could not sleep. I was tossing, I was turning, trying to get comfortable, but I just couldn't sleep. I realized that prior to this day, I was falling asleep around 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and 
Whoever designed this experiment did a poor job of evaluating the participants' normal sleep schedule. So this ended up being a preparation day and I had to use up my break day and it's all really just thanks to me. The first actual five days of the experiments, they went well. I felt well rested each day. I was sleeping a good portion of my time in bed. I had one awakening in the middle of the night on the new first day, but I was able to fall asleep after about 20 minutes. The last three days, I was falling asleep earlier and woke up before my alarms at 8 a.m., but I stayed in bed in until 8 a.m. because I wanted to keep the strict schedule. It was relatively normal, so let's just fast forward to the polyphasic sleep days. Like the monophasic sleep schedule, I started the polyphasic schedule at 11 p.m., which is the same time I have been getting into bed. A few minutes before, I had set my new alarms for the next five days to account for the new sleeping schedule. I'm not sure if I was just anxious or if I just wasn't tired enough, but I couldn't sleep at all during that segment. Because of this, I just decided to not record data for the segment and there will only be 14 times of data collection moving forward. The tough part was staying up until the next sleep period and the even tougher part was waking up after only two hours of time in bed. Waking up that morning felt awful, as did the rest of the week. There weren't many other notes that I took outside of this week, outside of these feelings, so let's just move on to the results of the experiment. For starters, let's talk about overall well-being and creativity. Overall, I felt less happy during the polyphasic week, and I could not sense having as many creative thoughts and ideas as I would on the monophasic schedule. This was affecting how I felt about my time management, which is important to note that while polyphasic sleep allows for more time in one's day, I felt like I was not getting as much done as I would have hoped during this time. However, stress levels were relatively the same throughout, as I didn't have many important deadlines to keep up with during both weeks. Sleep quality was also about the same, just a bit lower during the polyphasic sleep. In terms of sleep efficiency and time spent dreaming, I can understand why sleep efficiency ended up higher for the polyphasic sleep periods. Because I was sleep deprived, it was a lot easier to fall asleep and have less sleep onset latency. As for dreaming, this data is only as good as my best judgment, and I could only subconsciously time the length of my dreams. But it seems that my body was craving REM sleep and would jump quickly to REM in the later naps. As for alertness and cognitive ability, I felt a lot more alert during the first five days, which is expected from being well rested. However, the tests did not really show any stark differences when compared to each other. It's possible that the daily testing caused me to slightly improve at the tests, which counteracted any impairments caused by sleep deprivation. Another idea is that polyphasic sleep can work around impairments of one's cognitive ability because you're constantly resetting your sleep pressure, but it's most likely the former idea. I'm unsure if testing before would have had any different results, but again, whoever designed this experiment clearly needed to reevaluate a lot of sections beforehand. As I said at the beginning, polyphasic sleep is a way to have more time in your day to do the things that you want to do. But I may have purposely left out the part where it can come at the cost of your cognitive functions and overall well-being. Kind of left that part out. While it may sound nice in theory, there will be consequences to ideas that are just too good to be true or at the very least healthy for you. I hope this gave you some perspective on sleep deprivation and why we should all practice healthy sleeping habits. As we can note from my study, there really are no downsides to getting a nice eight hours of sleep each night. It's comforting, it's healthy, and it is the recommended amount of sleep that we should be getting. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. Oh, and I almost forgot, the final day. After having spent a lot of time with polyphasic sleep, I knew it was time for my body to get some well-deserved recovery sleep. With no more alarms, I went to bed at 11 p.m. I wanted to know how much sleep my body was craving. I lay in bed, thinking to myself, what a journey it has been. It truly has been an honor. I was ready. I was ready to pass out for the rest of the day and prove how important sleep really is. I pass out, I wake up, I look over to the clock and it's 1.30 in the morning. I proceeded to fall back asleep because I wanted to.
even if my body was somewhat adapting to the schedule, I knew I needed it. I fall back asleep. I wake up. I see that it's still dark out. So I'm a little bit skeptical when I, when I first woke up. But I go to check the clock. I realize what time it is. And I had just slept for 17 hours straight. <laughs> 19 and a half hours total. Recovery sleep is real. Thank you for watching.